Hey guys, it's Veron from Speak of the Stars, and I'm finally saying the right intro. Um, welcome back to my channel. So today we're doing a digital piece, um, but it's not exactly drawing. Um, if you've been on my channel for maybe a couple of months now, you know that I occasionally slip in like a vector work. So vector is basically shapes that you layer together um, to form a thing. And it uses math to calculate the shape, so uh, if you, say, resize the image in the program where you made that vector, it would not pixelize, it would retain the sharpness of it. The difference being that uh, since it's shapes, it's a bit tougher to create smooth shadows or smooth gradients, and it's more used for logos, icons, um, maybe even cell shading, I'm not really sure how you do it with drawing, but I use it for uh, design work or like this, uh, drawing weapons or icons or something like that. So I do like designing weapons, though I'm not particularly pro at it quite yet. And most of my characters do have weapons, so I tend to try to redesign that when I do the redesign for the character. So recently I did the redesign for Kin Arena, um, he's a dragon guy. <laughs> He's a dragon that wields a lance. And his weapon, to match his sort of futuristic outfit, uh, or slightly more modern outfit, does sort of follow that a bit more. Because in the past, if you saw that glance right there, his lance was a bit of a mix. It was like the sharpness and symmetry of more future modern stuff. But the engravings on the barrel or the body of the lance was like traditional engravings, like the really old style, um, really intricate stuff. But I wanted to match his, his new outfit, so I made it more sleek and streamlined, but not too plain. So what I found out when I, when I did uh, Serial's lance, which is also on my channel, I'll maybe link it somewhere if I remember. Um, I figured out that I should draw a draft first on a drawing program before I actually work on the vector. Uh, this is so that I know more or less the proportion and like I know how I would want the design to look like because that was the difficulty with Serial's Lens. With Serial's Lens, it had a lot of curly cues and like um, little intricate decorations uh, but they couldn't get the positioning and the proportion right plainly on Adobe Illustrator, so I did end up still having to draw it out first and then laying, overlaying it on the vector file and then chasing that of sorts with vector shapes. So in order to cut the process and make it faster, I drew it first for Kin and then I'm sort of quote-unquote chasing it to make it more, you know, straight and like, you know, clean. So, I'm applying a couple of new techniques here. I think I did some of them for series lands as well, but I've been learning a bit more on illustrator techniques at work, so I'll apply some of those here. So for example, I'll be using like gradients and opacity and um, layer styles to create the effect that I want. One thing though, like most of my designs for lances and weapons have been the color blue, I think I need to change that. <laughs> so I decided to go much cleaner and much simpler for Ken's lance, mainly because it would match his outfit a bit more, and also that it would be inconvenient to have a really detailed lance in terms of drawing and even in fighting. It's like a plain but still not too common lance is good. So the reason I do these weapon vectors was, was with the intention that if I need that lance again in a drawing and it's in a position that I could use this angle, I would just apply like new layer styles or add shadows and highlights and stuff like that to the lance without actually having to draw over it all over again. Of course, if the view is different, say from a top-down view or from a forward front-facing view, it might look different. but if I need a slightly three-fourths or side-angle view, 
this would work so it does cut down a bit on the production it also makes the lens look more um, uniform through the drawings because like what I noticed before when I used to draw especially for the really intricate weapons they would literally change the look for every drawing so I wanted to standardize a bit and make things a bit easier for me so I decided to do the vectors and it's also good practice for me since you know it's not work related but it's also still um, improving my skills in Adobe Illustrator. So let me know, do you guys enjoy this type of content? Because I do enjoy making the weapons and I probably won't stop making them but I'd like to know if you guys are interested in this type of stuff or would you rather see more drawings which I don't do this very often anyway since I have to draw the character first and do a character design before I actually do a weapon design but you know I just want to hear your opinions uh, maybe if you guys don't like it I can cut down on it a bit more or space it out even more or if you like it um, let me know if you want to know like some techniques or if you want to know how I did certain things, feel free to comment that down below and I'll answer to the best of my abilities. But yeah, just leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. So the concept for this lens, even in the original design, was that it was supposed to be um, sort of flexible. So back then, well even now actually, I really do like Archer from Fate Stay Night or the Fate series, so I really like that he has a bow that he can use a sword as an arrow of sorts. It doesn't make sense that much through physics, but it's a cool concept and I sort of wanted to do that with Kin's weapon. Like It's a lance, but supposedly the blade part of it can be detached and it can be used as a sword. That's why the original design, the very very first version, had a handle of sorts in front. Because you can just pop out the blade and a sword. And back when I didn't know how to make balanced characters yet, it was also supposed to be able to be cut or like to detach into three parts. So it would be a bow. And then he'd like use the blade part as the arrow. But as I grew older, I realized that's super, super OP. So I cut out the bow part and left the sword. But now that it's been a couple of years since I did that overhaul, I realized that's even still pretty OP and like doesn't really make any sense. So I cut out even the sword part. But I did retain how the blade can be popped off in a sense, but it's more like he can replace the blade if it's broken or if it's already rusty, he can just like switch it out like those razor blades or with a, like a cutter blade. Like he just he has spares that he made before and like he just switch out the blades. Um, but it also sort of still retains that sword characteristic that there's a sort of a handle of sorts. Um, its main function is that it would keep the blade in place, it wouldn't go like popping or flying or being left behind in someone's body or something like that. But um, if he needs it, he can pop it out and use it as an emergency knife or sword of sorts. But uh, the current kin that I'm developing isn't as OP, so he's not that good with the sword. He just happens to know how to swing it around because he swings on around the lens. Uh, but other than that, I'm cutting down on the skills and powers since it was super, super Gary's to OP levels of power. <laughs> so this is a part I don't usually include in my character designs or my weapon designs, but I do have a document here uh, in Adobe InDesign that it pretty much just compares the character designs and I have a template of sorts and I just drop everything there and it's like, you know, that's their character design. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please follow me on Facebook, Instagram, DeviantArt. Like or subscribe if you enjoyed this type of content. And I'll see you around.